It's one thing to focus on and fine-tune positive beliefs, but let me be honest with you, this can only take you so far. You have to understand that your total being has to operate at peak consistency for you to live a peaceful life. In other words, for you to start to think and then automatically work so as to produce whatever it is that you imagine, it takes a remarkable amount of internal integrity and consistency. Unfortunately, if you have limiting beliefs, they end up holding you back and dragging you down. They act as pollutants that get in the way of turning your ideas into a reality that you live out. And these limiting beliefs can be quite addictive. Oftentimes, we inherit our limiting beliefs from our parents. In fact, we may have to hang on to them for so long that we don't challenge them. We believe that they are real. We believe that they are part of our lives when, in reality, they don't have to be. Also, limiting beliefs can be so ingrained in our personal realities that they are at the same time everywhere and nowhere. They're right in front of you, but you can't see them. To reform and eliminate limiting beliefs, you must first find them. Two ways to find limiting beliefs. There are two ways to identify limiting beliefs. First, you are already aware of them. Regardless of how faint your impressions may be, you already have an idea that certain things that you choose to believe about yourself are not all that good. Congratulations if you have this. Even if you have a hunch, you are definitely in a better place than others who are completely clueless. The other way to find this is to find areas of your life that you are unhappy with. Trace them to your beliefs. Do you think you're ugly? Do you think you're dumb? Do you think you're broke and incapable of earning money? Do you think you're always dependent on others who are stronger or more influential than you? These are negative things, but they are not reality. Instead, what gives them the semblance of reality are the beliefs that they are founded on. Start with areas of your life that you are unhappy or frustrated with and trace these to certain beliefs. Regardless of how you do it, become fully aware of your negative beliefs. I know this might seem embarrassing. You probably don't want to go through this because, hey, nobody wants to feel small. Nobody wants to admit that they are wrong or they're engaged in something negative. But if you want to live a happier life, you need to get your ego out of the way. This is not a slam on you. This doesn't make you a bad person. This doesn't make you a defective person. Everybody suffers from this. But if you want to live a life of victory, you need to overcome by being a little bit more humble and admitting to yourself that you subscribe to certain negative beliefs that hold you down. Understand your negative beliefs. To truly understand your negative beliefs so you can start working to undermine them and achieve greater control over your life, you need to commit to a four-step process. You have to be both systematic and methodical about this because if you choose to attempt this based on your feelings, chances are you probably will fail. Chances are you probably would rather take the path of least resistance or simply give up. Again, it all boils down to ego. Most people don't like to admit they are wrong. Most people definitely feel uneasy and uncomfortable when they realize that there is something wrong with them. Finally, what makes this really difficult is that you no longer have the luxury of indulging in excuses. The great thing about excuses is that they numb us from painful realizations. If you are poor, struggling, not too bright, not too attractive, or whatever else you are suffering from, it's because you choose to be that way. I know, that's an unwelcome conclusion, but that's reality. And when you go through this four-step process, you realize the power of your choice. It can be quite disconcerting and troubling to a lot of people, because we like to believe that our reality chose us, not the other way around. This is why it's so comforting to have all these excuses at our disposal. Well, if you want to truly understand your negative beliefs, you have to let go of the emotional and psychological crutch of excuses. These have to be things of the past. Are you ready to take the four steps? Let's go. Step number one. Be clear on your negative beliefs. At this point, you should have some level of clarity regarding the things that you believe about yourself that routinely hold you back. Now, you're turning to turn the spotlight on these negative beliefs and tightly define them. What is it exactly that you believe about yourself? 
How does this hold you back? Is there an alternative reality? Is there an alternative reading to your situation? Ask these questions so you can tightly define the negative beliefs that constantly lead you to bad decisions and bad emotional states. Step number two, understand their triggers. As I've mentioned in a previous section, our beliefs are the filters that we use on reality. When we perceive stimuli from the rest of the world, our beliefs act like filters that unleash a chain reaction of emotional and mental states that leads us to bad decisions. They cement us in a downward spiral that we can't seem to break out of. Understand that the first step to getting out of this sad situation is to be clear as to what to trigger these beliefs. In the course of a day, note when you start thinking those negative beliefs. What external events have to happen? What do people have to say? What do people have to do? What other external events have to take place for you to start remembering these beliefs? You have to understand that when triggers occur, your negative beliefs splash in a split second and you are caught in an almost automatic or instinctive course of emotional, verbal, mental and physical action. Be aware of how quick this all plays out so you can instantly freeze the trigger and dwell on it. Step number three, understand their effect on you. When you froze that moment in time when you got triggered, focus on the effect. What do you start thinking about yourself? What do you start thinking about your ability to perform, your capability, your skill set, as well as certain truth about who you are, about who you think you are? When you perceive that trigger, do you start, for example, thinking that you're too stupid to understand, or you don't have the money, or you are not worthy? Again, this flash into your mind in a split second. You have to really freeze these and slow them down. Now you may be thinking that these are just statements that flash into your mind. They're not. They do have an effect on you. They program you to perform and feel a certain way, and ultimately, they depress your confidence levels. Keep going back to the trigger and focus, in slow motion, on the effect it has on you. Keep tossing this around in your mind until you see the clear connection. If you're frustrated with any part of your life, believe me, this is happening. It takes place over and over again, and the result is your life. Step number four. Get a sense of urgency about conquering these beliefs. Now that you have gone through steps 2 and 3 enough times, it should be clear to you that your negative belief's effects should be clear enough to you. Once you see the connection between the things you choose to believe about yourself and their triggers as well as the results they produce, now is the time to take action. You have to allow yourself to get a sense of urgency about conquering these beliefs. Be clear that you need to change. Be clear that you need to break out of this negative downward spiral. However, that sense of clarity must rise to the level of emotional urgency. Make no mistake about it, all of us are capable of intellectual realizations, but these are not going to change your life. You can come up with all sorts of amazing insights, but until and unless you feel so pumped up about making certain changes based on these realizations, your life is not going to get any better. Focus on getting a sense of urgency about conquering these negative beliefs that hold you back and drag you down. Conquer negative beliefs. Now comes the good stuff. In the previous steps, you have become clear as to certain beliefs that hold you back and prevent you from operating at peak performance levels. In this section, I'm going to step you through the process of getting out from under these negative beliefs. Remember. Your life is a product of your beliefs. Change your beliefs and you change your life. I know that sounds so easy, but what it makes it so hard is the fact that people do not use a systematic and methodical way of undermining their negative beliefs. Instead, they go with their feelings. They just jump at the opportunity and they end up failing again and again. If you want to conquer your negative beliefs and start living a life of possibility and victory, you need to follow the steps I'm going to share with you below. Stick to them. Follow them to the letter. Step number one. Trace negative beliefs to memories or past situations. Let's get one thing clear here. People will not believe certain things about themselves if they cannot trace it to some sort of memory 
or some sort of bad situation. It's not like somebody just told you that you're stupid or you're weak and incapable. It's not like somebody told you that you're going to die poor and powerless. These conclusions must have come from somewhere. That somewhere is traced to a series of events or certain memories. Your job with step number one is quite simple. Find those memories. Find those situations. Now understand that there is such a thing as a false memory. These are events that we choose to believe happened when, in reality, they did not happen as we remember them. How do we know and how do we deal with this? Check out step number two. Step number two. Are the facts behind your memories complete? This is the most basic question you need to ask yourself because if you believe that you are afraid of taking a risk because you got burned before, maybe the facts behind your recollection are incomplete. Maybe you jumped to the wrong conclusions. Maybe you assumed that certain things were there when they were not there. You need to believe that you jumped to the wrong conclusion. Look for a missing piece. Look for a fact that you assumed was there, but it turns out that it wasn't there at all. You need to zero in on this fact to diffuse the power of your negative belief. For example, when you were growing up, your father may have called you an idiot once, but you hung on to this negative memory and assumed that you always thought that you were stupid, dumb, and will not amount to much. Now, think back to the time when he called you an idiot. Was he talking about you, or he was saying something instinctively? Was he reacting? Do you see how it works? It turns out, oftentimes, that people who love you would, cer would say certain things out of place and out of character. In fact, you may have even jumped to the wrong conclusion because they may have been referring to something else. Whatever the case may be, believe this to diffuse and dilute your negative belief. Stop assuming that certain things are present when, in reality, they may have been missing. For example, if you were in a junior high school and this very pretty blonde girl that you've always liked turned around and, in your general direction, said you're ugly or called you an ape, you may have carried this negative belief with you for the rest of your life. You may even have suffered from low self-esteem because of this. What if it turned out that she wasn't referring to you, but the guy behind you, or she was referring to something else? In other words, you jumped to the wrong conclusion. You did not realize that you were missing facts in that memory. You have to examine the factual basis of your negative beliefs and ask yourself whether you have jumped to the wrong conclusions. Are you imagining things that were not there? Again, you have to believe this to diffuse or dilute your negative belief. Step number three. If the facts are complete, did you exaggerate them? Let's assume that your father did call you an idiot and he was referring to you. Now ask yourself, are you exaggerating things? Are you blowing things out of proportion? Was it really as bad as you imagined? Now, it's one thing for your dad to say, you're an idiot. The same he would call his friends or even himself an idiot or stupid if he or somebody else made a mistake. Now, does this mean that he thinks you're not going to amount to anything? Does this mean that he thinks that you're borderline retarded? Because you have to understand that these two lines of logic are very different from each other. People do say things that they shouldn't say. It is true that when you're around children, you have to be very careful on what you say because it's like riding on wet cement. And that may have happened with you. Your father or mother may have said something negative, but you blew it out of proportion. You made your life miserable because it became the central fact of your life. You may have been living a life of defeat and misery because of that one time when your mother called you a bitch or you may have found yourself in a rough situation and had an abortion, but let me tell you, one mistake doesn't define you. Everybody is capable of a bad day. You may have been laughed at by your class or you may have been even thrown in jail, but all of us are capable of that one bad day. Does it really make sense to define your life based on that one bad day? This fact happened, but it's up to us whether you're going to exaggerate them and blow them out of proportion, because the more we do this, the worse that memory becomes. The emotional cascade that it triggers gets worse and worse every time. Stop exaggerating your failings in life because, believe me, all of us have failings. If you're really honest with yourself, those bad memories 
are not really as bad as you imagine them to be. You have to believe all of this so as to diffuse and dilute your negative belief. Yes, your mother or father called you an idiot, but it's not what you think it is. It doesn't justify you automatically concluding that you're not going to amount to much in life or you're completely and totally worthless. Step number four. If the facts are complete, did you overreact? Now, understand that there is a big difference between overreacting and exaggerating. I know they may seem identical in certain situations. In fact, a lot of people think they are one and the same. They are not. When you exaggerate a fact, you blow it out of proportion. When you overreact, you read into the fact all sorts of things you shouldn't be reading into it. Take control of your reaction right here, right now. Even if it's true that your father called you an idiot, it doesn't mean that you should overreact and assume that you think you're worthless and even worse, assume that you are worthless. Stop, over, stop overreacting. Take control of your reaction to these past events right here, right now. Because if you don't, your negative beliefs will continue to erode your confidence. It will continue to eat away at you and you will be unable to live a life in, that, in a way that ensures you perform at peak levels. Step number 5. Imagine if you did not have these limited beliefs. Regardless of whether you take step 2, step 3 or step 4, focus on the negative impact of your limited belief. Put it another way, imagine how much happier and powerful you would feel if you did not have these limited beliefs. Imagine all the things that you could have done with your life if you did not have to carry that heavy weight. Focus on your confidence levels. Realize that your level of confidence is due to what you choose to believe about yourself. Get that sense of urgency to do something, anything, to knock the facts out of your limiting beliefs. You have to remember, these limiting beliefs get their power from the fact that you think they are real. You think that they are reality. When you operate with a heightened sense of urgency, you will find a way to start picking at them. If you can't knock them out by going through the front door, you can try the side door. If that doesn't work, go through the roof or the back. You can dig a tunnel. Whatever it is, do not give up because with sustained effort, you will be able to pick apart these facts and come up with a view that enables you to neutralize the power of your negative beliefs. Now this doesn't mean that you're going to pretend that this did not happen. I'm not talking about self-delusion here. All it means is that you're going to relegate this to the past and tightly define them in such a way that they no longer have negative hold on you. They're still important life lessons, but they do not have to define you.